G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. It's a beautiful day up here in the garden today. A good day to talk about permaculture. Permaculture. So much to say about permaculture. In this video, it's specifically about Jeff Lawton's permaculture course. And I want to talk about what I got out of doing his course. Yeah, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've met Jeff Lawton, my permaculture teacher. You've probably seen the video where I met Jeff Lawton. Totally synchronistic experience that was. And I think it had something to do with the bigger picture, I think, for some reason. So when I came in the first time, he was sitting right over there, having lunch with a bunch of young students. Hmm, I thought, nah, maybe I should come back another time. But then a young fellow said, Just a nice guy, mate. Just go in. And I said, OK. Then I proceeded. And at this point, I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed that I'm just barging in on Jeff like this. But I just went over and I said, G'day, Jeff. You know what? The funny thing was, he recognised me straight away from my YouTube channel. And he said, G'day, mate. It's a weedy garden guy. How are you? I didn't know you were going to turn up. It's no. good to see you. And I said, I didn't even know I was going to be here, Jeff. I took a wrong turn in your driveway, mate, and here I am. You turned up just at the right time. Just finishing lunch, and we can get out there and have a look around. We can have a quiet conversation. Oh, like fresh food is like the difference between fresh fish and stale fish. You definitely are what you eat. And if you don't know what you eat, you don't know who you are quite often. You've lost that connection. We identify ourselves by the produce that sustains us and we should never lose sight of that. <laughs> oh mate, that was so amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally broke, man. A, a tour in the middle of a thunderstorm while yeah. it started one. Yeah, I've got to go and get dry, change my clothes so I can carry on teaching, all right? Cool. No worries. Thanks a lot. Man. All right. Tell you a few things um, that I think have really been really important for me in the Weedy Garden that I've learned through, through Jeff. You know, we could turn this whole valley into a permaculture ecosystem, this whole valley with hundreds and hundreds of families. It would be so awesome to do that. I'm using the philosophies and the teachings of permaculture to fit my needs and to fit the weedy garden. So on this video, I'm going to talk about four of the coolest things that I've learned uh, that have like really helped me in the weedy garden. Okay. One is swales. Swales, that's where the camera is. Uh, this taro is planted on a berm. The berm is like the mound that is on the bottom side of the hill on the swale. If you want to know more about swales, then I'd suggest you go to the video that I've put on, a three-part series about swales. And actually the first part of that video of that video series about swales is Jeff Lawton's class on swales. Extra water enabling planting of high value trees. So you can bring in different trees as the swale starts to function better and better. I mean I'm sitting up here on the dry here and underneath my feet here, underneath the camera, it's still quite moist. And that means that the water is like braked and it's, it's now sinking into the ground. We had huge big rains here recently, as you know, and the swales did have it, actually there was a period of time where I came up when it was really, really raining heavily and the water was up in the swales. And I could see the whole swales was like full of water, but half an hour after the rain stopped, it's all gone again. So I don't get any mosquito problems up here. The swales are mostly empty. I've only seen them full of water once. Jeff Lawton's classes are really easy to understand. He, he tells things in a simple way. Sometimes he's on the blackboard drawing his pictures and explaining what it's on about with his drawings on the blackboard with different colours. And actually that's what inspired me to do those drawings on my episodes when I'm explaining things. Uh, and, and it illustrates things a lot easier. Lots of good illustrations. Another thing that permaculture has taught me is about support species, like support trees. Who would have thought that planting two trees together like right beside each other would be a good thing but it is a good thing because this little one here this is a, a really fast growing one 
as you can see, they were both like this big when they were planted. And this one I've chopped down already once. You saw that on the other video. So you can see the root is, oh, this is rotting already. Yeah, and see how it's rotting? And the fungus is gonna get in there. You can see a bit of fungus spores already going in there. And that's just gonna lay on top there. On top, I don't know if you can see all the other stuff. I've got cassava and all sorts of other clippings and trimmings, but mostly it's this um, pigeon pea, which you can actually eat as well. It's flowering now, which is nice because the bees are gonna love that. See, right there, did you hear that? I'll put my microphone up. So the bees are happy with the pigeon pea that's flowering at the moment. My King Thai mango, which is shooting really well, it's actually doing real well. Um, in the direct summer, when it's really hot in Australia, then it's, it's a little plant. It doesn't really like to have that full sun yet. It wants to get a bit more established, All right? So in the meantime, this one is gonna shade it from that direct sun. Sun is up there, comes up there, goes down there. So that little mango tree is getting nice light. All this up here is also down there. Same with the mango tree, it's gonna find its way down. But by this time, six years old, seven years old, I'm gonna chop it out totally, because that, by that time, the mango tree's gonna be up here anyway. And then, um, and then when all these roots die from this plant, like all this stuff here like that goes down into the soil, that all rots. And then the roots from this one, the little mango tree go, oh look, already, like there's a supermarket right all the way down all the way down to the water and they like, grow easily and quickly down using that space of the rotting root wood and it kind of go and they kind of go oh you know what i mean i reckon if you could understand tree language they'd go oh thank you it makes life a lot easier so that's why they call them support trees ladies and gentlemen and the boys and girls that's one of the things I learned from Jeff's course, the online course. And um, I'll show you something else. I'll show you some. You wanna see my worms? It's been a while since I've shown you my worms, <laughs> okay? So coming around, I've gone up and around and everything. Um, it's all gonna be done with my GoPro today because I'm saving all the cinematic beauty for my movie. You know the you know the angle, the wormbill angle. Everything's holding up pretty good. See this is keeping the rats out and the flies out. It's all working. Um, this is the simple worm bath that I learned how to build from Jeff Lawton. Okay, my battery just died, so new battery. I've got to come in underneath here so I can kind of get in to, to the camera and show you. So the worm farm. Wormville, as I call it. Uh, I'll just show you the progress. I haven't looked at this for a couple of days. I've got lots of yakon, bit of yakon, bit of cassava. Pew! Oh, there's some worms. Look. Can you see? When the worms find something they like, like this, what's this? That's a rot rotting pumpkin. Worms, they love rotting pumpkin. Can you see them all? Bit of cardboard underneath there. That looks like a bit of yakon. Now that's a bit of cassava. That's a bit of cassava. So basically what happens is when the food runs out on that side, right, they just basically all move over here. Because they can travel. They're wanderers. They wander all around the place looking for food. All right. So if I go like this, you'll, you'll see the top part. There's no worms there. All right. I can scrape off this top stuff. And so there I've got kind of pure worm castings like that, right? 
I didn't put that in my garden, but what happens if I dig down a bit deeper? We can hear I'm just going into worms now. See, they're still in here. See if I open yeah. that up. Can you see? There's like tons of tons of worms. And they're kind of munching away at all the stuff that I've been putting in there, right? But I'm not putting any more. I'm not putting any more food in this section anymore. So eventually they'll eat all the cardboard and and it almost can't reckon. Oh yeah, look, there's a corn cob, see? But it's so it's all almost nothing anymore. Corn corn cob. And everything like it's broken down. So you've got your worm castings, which is like really yummy for the plants um so so what you do is you do that right and you take away your worm castings and you keep doing that and i've done that over this side stop feeding them up here and i just keep i'm feeding them down here now back in here in frame again being up in the kitchen and i've been making a lot of um cassava flour so i've got cassava peels i've got a bit of onion peel see bits of bits of yak on here that are the ends of the yak on and stuff i made lots of yak on syrup so that's all really yummy. A bit of water, See, coffee. <clears throat> bit, of co bit of coffee, and uh, so that's the yakon skins. And there's enough browns and greens in all that, I reckon, to keep it going. So I just cover it up with a bit of bag just to keep that one moisture in it so it doesn't dry out. But at the other end here, I don't mind if it dries out, the worms they'll leave it if it dries out. But all that stuff that hasn't been taken, you know. I could probably take it and sieve it if I wanted to. If I wanted to make it nice and fine for potting mix. So that's another really cool thing that I learned from Jeff Lorden. But once you've got pure worm castings, it's actually a really good uh, antibiotic. Get a cut on yourself or something like that, or you, you fall off your bike and you scrape your skin. Go out in the garden, get your worm castings and rub it on. It's got really those beneficial bacteria that's going to help you heal. Okay, who would have known? So thanks Jeff Lorden for another good tip. But down here is my collection spot. As you see, see, there's nothing much in it. Actually, there's probably not much in it at all. And that's good. Because it doesn't last very long in the bin. Um, okay, there's a little bit in there. So what I'm gonna do, it's been sitting there for a while. So I'm gonna test it. Oh man, it smells like a nice, you know, can you imagine going out to your grandparents' farm and you wake up in the morning and the sun's just hit everything and, and the chooks are going rock rock and the cows and everything's going on and it has that beautiful smell in there of like there's no cars, there's no, no pollution around anywhere, it's like nice and fresh, kind of like a forest, like a really like wicked like rainforest, like when you're sitting beside the creek in it, you know, it's like all that wood and stuff. That's what it should smell like. If it smells like you're walking past a, a sewage or you're walking past something that just died, what you do with it, just go like that and chuck it out. Because it's no good, it'll kill your plants because it's full of anaerobic bacteria, the bad ones. So when I want to use it, I get my watering can, fill it up with water and I pour it in my worm farm. And then the next day it's all dripped out through the worm castings into my bucket. And then I just turn the tap on, fill this up. I probably usually put about half of one of these in my watering can, which holds nine liters. I don't know what that is in America, guys. That's like five gallons, right? Yeah, so that's about it. So that's the worm farm, that's the worm juice. And I put that on and I water it on the plants and the plants, the plants love it. No, I'm just not going to do that. But I want to show you something that a swale is really good for too. See, this is something I want to show you. I'll just see. See, I mean, I'm no expert, right? So you don't have to do what Weedy does. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. And I reckon it's working for me. All right. So like I said, this is not a gardening program as such. It's more like a see what you do and find out. <laughs> So I dug this little swale. I don't know if you can see I'm standing in it. Yeah, you can. And what I've done, what I've done here is I've chucked down a bunch of uh, wood chips. And if I dig down here, just like, pff, there's no wood chips anymore, guys. It's all turned into soil, all right? And um, if I just kept feeding this with leaves and 
when I cut the grass or whatever. I can just chuck it back down here. This becomes kind of just a big mulch pit. And when it rains, all the nutrients soak down that way. And because the hill is going down that way, the water wants to go that way. So it's going to sink down here and go that way. Underneath, this is the berm, underneath the berm. The berm is the dirt that you got out of the hole and you put it on the downhill side and you make a little mound. So this needs to be like water level, like level. So you got your little, you got little A-frame like that, like Jeff, he just showed me how to do the A-frame when you put it like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we want it just to be nicely balanced. Like it's like you'll wobble back and forwards, but that'll do. I'm just doing a rough. Well, water will level it later. We'll miss that mango, that's the main thing. We will miss that mango. Yeah, so the swale goes on contour. So this, so in here, this, this is basically when it rains, the water level is, is level all the way around the hill because the swale is built on contour. And you make your contour, you find your contour line with like an A-frame that you build. I've got this explained on the swale video. Um, if you want to check it out in more detail, but it's like an A-frame with a string hanging down and a weight. So if the thing's uphill, your weight's going to hang down here. So you want to move your, your A-frame around. So you've got your little thing hanging down right in the middle and that's the level. Then you mark a spot and you keep doing that around your hill. And, and that's how you find where the level spot is around the hill. I don't know if that makes sense, but a whole, I made a whole series about it and that'll make sense. But what I've did here, I've got some ginger from my friend down the road. I swapped him some extra pumpkins for a bunch of extra ginger and I just put them in and I'll show you what I put in and I'll show you what I got out and I can say what else I have in here I also have probably in this in this length I've probably got I've probably got three wheelbarrow fulls of composted cow manure that I got from a mate of mine down here called um, Mike and there's a link to him if you want if you're local around Kyogle and you want that composted cow manure there's a link in the video, the pumpkin video, what I did with so many pumpkins and his contact number's in there and you can call him and go and pick up a trailer load. But I think he's got plenty of pumpkins for now. But let's have a look at the ginger. Okay, I'll just stick the fork in to loosen it up a bit. I'll just try and get in because I went into town today and I went into the shop and I said, do you want some more ginger? And she said, oh yeah, can you bring me five kilos tomorrow? And I went, yeah, right there. And ginger is pretty expensive at the moment, actually. And so is pet bull, but I think I've got about as much ginger as I can fill my tank in my car up with petrol. So that's kind of cool, it's like I grew my own petrol, in a way. I just want to get out five kilos, so I'm just going to like loosen up about a metre. There we go. That's better. It's easier to get it on the back side. I always go in from the back side, it's good. And this crocodile Dundee said, that's not some ginger. This is ginger. That's just one clump. I just sort of break it apart a bit. You see, I just put this one, just put the one down there. See that one? That's the original one that I planted. That's what I planted, and that's what I got from it. That's good. I think I might, I want to put some back, so I might break off that. I'll break off that and I'll put that back and I'll take that and I'll get that much next time. <laughs> Can you see that made just made sense then, didn't it? Permaculture, it's permanent. So if I take all these and go home, what am I gonna do next year? That's it. I could probably plant that one too, see? Plant that one. Ginger, I'm gonna, I can put a lot more ginger in the swales. I've got a lot more space to put ginger in. I can put some more swales in. I could make a ginger empire. If you wanted to, you could. All it needs a bit of ground and a bit of know-how and a swale. <laughs> so what I was thinking, if you've got any questions uh, that you want to ask Jeff about his course, uh, or if you want to ask me. Um, see, I'm on my way to Denmark. But when I get back, I'm going to go out to Jeff's place, out to Zaytuna Farms, out to the Permaculture Institute. So if you have any questions to Jeff, then write them in the comments on this video and we'll answer those comments in the Q&A that I do when I come back from Denmark and um, we'll go and look around his food forest. There's a lot of information that you can already find out uh, through the link in this video to Jeff. One more, 
It's like ginger coming out my ears. Got another one. What do you reckon? That's more than five kilos. So ginger's pretty ginger's pretty expensive these days, I think. But so is petrol. So with five kilos of ginger, that filled my car up with petrol. That's pretty good. So that's kind of permaculture. I put it out and I put it back. So next year there's some again. And if I do keep doing that, it becomes permanent. But permaculture also means that you're putting more into the earth than you're actually taking from it, really. That's what you want at the end of the day. You want to have the system so it's feeding itself, it's creating its own energy. Basically you want a system that's going around by itself and you're just taking off the top. You're just taking off the fruit and everything else goes back in. Your chickens are fertilizing the ground. You know, you're chopping and dropping, you're feeding the soil. I reckon we should talk about how a forest thinks. I'm gonna go over there and I'll tell you how a forest thinks. As you know now, it's all about feeding the microbes. But thinking like a forest thinks means understanding how the food system works in, in the soil. Because in the forest, you've got a tree. And that tree, think about all the food that that tree is going to generate for itself by all the birds that are landing in it. One of the most important things for a plant to have while it's growing is phosphate. Where does phosphate come from? Bird poo. Bird poo is rich in phosphate and a bunch of other stuff as well. Where's the food coming from in a, in, in a forest system? It comes from the animal life that's living in the system. And, and all the plant matter and all the trees and leaves that are falling and dying, all that organic matter going back into the soil, feeding the soil again, keeping that cycle going. See? So if you take all the trees away, take all the plants away, and then just plant your crop, then it's like, okay, first couple of years it might do real well because there's lots of nutrients in the soil, but then they'll use those nutrients up. And after a couple of years, there's no more birds coming anymore. There's no more bugs and insects and all that because you've got to keep them away because you want to grow your stuff so you're probably going to spray them. So there's nothing else coming back into the soil, do you understand? That's why it's important to have an ecosystem that's feeding itself. So you set it up and it looks after itself permanently. That's like, that's the core of permaculture. It's also about how to live in communities and so on. That's, but I, I use the aspect of permaculture in my garden how to observe the patterns of nature. Hmm? So just remember, you want wonderful, colorful, natural, clean, organic food that's gonna give your body its full potential. When your body's working, your mind is working. And when your mind and your body are working, guys, your heart is working. And when your heart is working, well, you're kind of connected to everything. So this is the real paradise on earth. This is, this is really the way to do it. And if you're a subscriber, remember to check the little notification button so you get a little notification whenever I upload a new video. Okay, so hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.